Hi, this is video tutorial number 33, Intro to Jitter. Today we're working on the crossfade object, otherwise known as xfade. X, cross, get it? It, it helps you to remember why it's called xfade. Um, to do that, we're going to use an object that we created not last week, but believe it or not, the week before. And uh, so let's just uh, switch over to that object. You might remember this object. Um, we uh, read a movie into it and then we push the metronome and there it is, the countdown object. I've accidentally resized it, of course, but uh, that's it. You know, for the purposes of keeping things simple, why don't we, um, the first thing we'll do is get rid of uh, unlock your patcher and just type a P in here, right in the old JIT window. So now it's the JIT P window. And you'll see that window over there disappear, and this one reappear, which is a much handier little window. And let's move it up here nice and tight so that we have as much room as we can possibly get for working in our patcher. And then we'll make our patcher big and grab everything and move it up to the top and now let's grab it again but hit the option key first so we're duplicating it okay and then just to um, make sure that we don't get confused about which movie it is let's uh, replace countdown with uh, b-ball b-b-a-l-l so bball.mov and uh, lock your patch rules, just make sure everything's working here. Because so often it's not. There it is, our little top, top, tap, tap. Okay, now we're ready to take a look at the xfade object. So unlock your patcher, type the letter N, and type J I T dot X fade. There it is. Okay, and in order to get xfade to work, we're going to need one of a uh, window. So option click on one of these. It doesn't matter which one. And just hook it right up there. Okay. Then we're going to need uh, an input. Come on, yeah. That just doesn't look right. Okay. From the left hand outlet of your first movie to. No. Not the. Don't use the matrix from the JIT QT movie part. Run a line down and into the top left hand inlet of JIT Fade. And you can see it start right up there. And then do the same thing for the other side, except it goes in the right inlet. So this crossfading object, what it does is move from uh, video 1 to video 2. And how do we tell it to do that? We just have to send it a message. So let's try sending it two messages. Message 0 and message 1. And then, as um, a lot of times, as happens when you want to use an object, you need to prepend it with some sort of command. So type n and prepend, and then xfade, because it needs to know what to do. OK. So run your two messages into crossfade. hand side there and run that down to the crossfade object and hopefully I'm not guaranteeing that it will work but it might work so zero is where it is now and then if we hit one whammo it goes to the other side however 
um, perhaps we want something in between. So let's um, let's uh, get another uh, unlock your patcher. Type n and type slider. Right. And uh, well, that's just silly. We don't need a vertical slider, so let's make it into a horizontal slider. It's got that big control board look on it. And then uh, we're also going to need to work on the values that it puts out. So uh, open your inspector. Oh, click on your slider. And let's take a look down here. Just zoom in. We definitely want to float the output, and our range we want from uh, 0 to 1, so we're going to just make this 1. And uh, I think that should do it. Um, let's go look. If it doesn't, do we need to uh, make our knob color a different color just so that we can enjoy it more? I think so. Let's make it red. There we go. Because we, you know, you need a professional control here. Okay, so the output of that slider is now supposedly going to go between zero on one side and one on the other. Let's see if it does. We lock our patcher and look at that. We have got ourselves a full-on fader for video. Here, I'll uh, zoom in on that and just take a look. Ta-da! Now, you may remember that uh, our at op object also does that. That is true. But just try and get the at op object to smoothly go back and forth in such a lovely manner and you'll understand exactly why the X fade object is so nice. And that's all we really care about today. So that's it. Thanks everyone for taking a look at the old X fade object or crossfade. You notice I go back and forth between X fade and crossfade as though I had a little X crossfader on my output? Suppose I do. Well, I will catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.